What's up, YouTube? Chad here with our top 10 best beers of the year list for 2017. This is the ninth annual installment of the top 10 best beers. It should actually be the 10th annual, uh, but 2008 was the first year I started doing uh, beer reviews both in, in text and video, and I only did a few video reviews that year because I didn't start till October, and it just never occurred to me to do a top 10 best beers of the year list. I don't know why. So really, it should be the 10th, but it's the ninth annual. Uh, so we got that out of the way. All right, so as if this is your first time watching a top, Chad's top 10 best beers of the year list, the rule is that it's only the top 10 you know best beers that I reviewed for the first time in that calendar year. So re-reviews don't count, which is kind of a bummer because uh, as you may know, if you've been watching me since I started doing the, the video beer reviews here again on YouTube, I changed my style from just you know personal preference to uh, doing BJCP specs. And quite a few beers that I uh, reviewed, I've scored, you know, in the high 40s. And I, so uh, with no further, you know, let me scooch over. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a picture of the beer right in this space here. So, all right. So here we go. Number 10, Crooked Can High Stepper American IPA. This is the year I officially became tired of IPAs. I mean, I wouldn't say I'm sick of them. I mean, I'll obviously still buy and drink them, but they just don't wow me the way they used to. So I'm putting a standard American IP on this list. You know it's got to be good. There's not much to say beyond the fact that it's citrusy and piney and tastes great. So if you like a good IPA, you'll like this beer. Number nine, Sierra Nevada Ovila White Ale. Man, I love a good wit beer. It's hard to find an authentic Belgian white, even remotely fresh here in the States. And American breweries tend to make their uh, wit beers a little too Americanized for, Americanized for my taste, but this is a legit Belgian style all the way. A perfect blend of the fruity yeast esters and coriander and orange peel spices. Plus, it's really refreshing and totally sessionable. Plus, it's probably available in your local supermarket. That didn't that they that they didn't dumb down the recipe for a mainstream audience is impressive. Number eight, Fru Kulsch. I'm sure I'm pronouncing that wrong. I used to hate the Kolsch style, but in the past few years, I've really come to appreciate it from reading all these books and learning about BJCP specs and all that. It's one of the weird hybrid ale lager styles, and the recipe is pretty similar to a Pilsner or any other kind of pale lager, but it's got these little nuances to it that once you really develop your palate and learn about Zymergy, again, buy these books, uh, and brewing history, you realize how great a beer this style can be. What's really interesting about this particular review was that I first reviewed a really old bottle of it, and it was all right, but then I found out the local craft beer bar had it on tap, so I rushed over there and got a growler full of it, and the difference was amazing. Full of flavor, delicious, and really drinkable. I bet your beer store probably doesn't have this uh, fresh, but a legit craft beer bar might, so try it if you can find it uh, fresh, or any authentic German Kolsch for that matter. Number seven, Sapporo Premium Black. You know, I've never really considered Sapporo that great of a brewery. They're kind of the Budweiser of Japan. And if you go to a Japanese or Chinese restaurant here in America, you'll probably find their flagship lager. Um, but it'll probably be an old can or bottle. But this year, they reached out to me and actually sent me a few really fresh cans of their beers. And this is uh, their take on the German Schwarzbier style. And I was amazed by how well it conformed with the style guidelines. In fact, all three beers they sent me scored well over a 40. But I like this one the best. Uh, number six, McKellar Faction, Queen of Passion. IPA isn't the only style I'm kind of over. Si sour and wild beers don't really do it for, for me as much anymore as they used to. The idea behind this beer was to take a standard American pale ale and do it wild. It doesn't sound like that would work, but in the hands of the right brewer, anything can be done. And this is proof of that. I mean, McKellar is pretty well world-renowned brewer because he can do all these wacky styles and pull them off. So, uh, yeah, check that one out. Number five. Well, I can't pronounce it, so you'll have to go by the text there. It's a Czech, Czech beer. I don't know how to pronounce this beer, but I do know that it's awesome. I never had a 3A Czech pale lager before, not to be confused with a Czech premium pale lager, which is also known as a Czech Pilsner. So this is kind of like a Pilsner Czech Pilsner light. Uh, this is one of the most popular examples of that particular style in the Czech Republic, and I can see why. It's very similar to Pilsner or Kell, which I also love, but it's a little lighter. And damn if it's not delicious and really drinkable. I got this sent to me straight from Prague, so thanks to Max Bonson 
for sending to me for my BJCP video beer reviews. Number four, Tukur Dunkel's Hefeweizen. If you know me, you know I love a good German wheat beer. Usually I prefer a regular half over a Dunkelweizen, but this one was fantastic. You know, banana bread, you know, banana bread, clove, smooth, refreshing, all that stuff. I can't believe I've never had a Tukur before. I'm um, sorry I waited so long. I mean, again, with the, uh, there isn't much to say other than just it's a fantastic example of style, and I love that style. Number three, Brew Hub Rome City IPA. All right, so I'm not completely sick of IPAs. So I put two of them on my top 10 list. And I'm kind of playing a hometown favorite here because this beer is brewed only a few miles from my house and literally right around the corner from my work. It really impressed me because Brew Hub is a contract brewery and they only have a few beers that they make under their own label and none of them are all that great. So I didn't have high expectations for this beer, but as soon as I taste it, I was amazed. I mean, it's on par with an IPA that would come out of one of those uh, major San Diego breweries. In fact, it actually won a gold medal at this year's GABF for best session IPA, although I disagree that it should be considered a session IPA at 5.8% ABV, but I do agree that it's a medal winning beer. So if you live in Florida or you can get Brew Hub where you live, definitely check that one out. Number two, Eight Wired Eye Stout. A friend of mine who works in the beer industry gave me this bottle just to see what I think of it. I'm not sure if he thought this was just another run-of-the-mill beer I could use for, you know, just another beer review or if he actually thought it was great and wanted to see if I agreed. Either way, it turned out to be a world-class Imperial Stout. In fact, it seems like I don't get too many standard Imperial Stouts anymore. I mean, there are obviously plenty of Stouts that have chocolate or coffee or whatever and all that stuff in them or they're barrel-aged or both, but this beer is just a straight two spec imperial stout so it's big and bold with a lot of roasted malt and hops and alcohol and everything and it's just perfectly balanced and the beer is really drinkable i almost gave us a perfect 50 actually number one central 28 trekker beer so this might be a really controversial pick for my best beer of the year and if you don't live in florida you've probably never seen or heard of central 28 brewing uh there are about halfway between orlando and daytona beach Hopefully that'll change soon because if they can make all their beers this good, they'll be going places. So Trekker uh, is technically more of a grisette than a traditional Saison. It seems to be a little, well, not a little, overtly Americanized with the hop character. But when I was judging it, I found that it conformed the style guidelines, you know, pretty much perfectly. Uh, what I really love about this beer is, is just wicked estuary. Uh, yeast character, lots of banana and spice and some citrusy hops. Just makes it smell and taste delicious. This is a perfect beer for Florida and warm weather beer nerds in general. It's only 4.8% ABV, so it's definitely sessionable, and it comes in cans instead of bottles, so it's portable and durable. Uh, definitely the kind of beer you want to take to the beach or the park or camping or wherever. Kind of reminds me of a Stillwater beer, but if Stillwater made a beer that was actually conformed to a style guideline... I find myself picking up six packs of this to keep in the fridge all the time. Everyone I've given it to seems to like it, and if you can find it, definitely buy it. It's fairly cheap, too. So with all those factors in mind, you can probably tell why I'm ranking this my number one beer of 2017. I have a shit ton of honorable mentions. I'm not even going to mention them here, so check it out on the, uh, the website. Um, I will be doing a top five worst beers. Uh, so that'll be coming in a few days. But, uh, you know, so everything will be coming soon. Links to everything, including the previous, you know, top 10 best beers in the description box. I guess that's about it. Thanks for watching. Can't wait to see what happens in 2018. And I will see you guys real soon. Bye. Somebody brewed it. Chad just reviewed it. Thanks for watching Chad's beer review. Trust me, the next episode will be a lot better. 